Kevin Conley. And I'm Melissa Braswell. So, Melissa, what did you do this weekend? Um, well, on Friday, I went out for a friend's birthday, and then I watched a little bit of the Super Bowl yesterday, but what did you do? Oh, nothing much. I slept. We had a Super Bowl party at my friend's house. Did you? So, we partied. Well, that's about it. Nothing spectacular. Mm -hmm. All right. All right, let's take a look at campus news. All right, Black History Month continues on UTC with Hip Hop, be be hip -hop Beyond Beats and Rhymes by Byron Hurt. The screening of this 2006 Sundance Film Festival documentary will be at 7 p.m. in the Fine Arts Center in the Roland Hayes Concert Hall. And in other campus news, Theta Phi Chapter of Sigma Kappa Sorority has opened its sorority house to residents where members can live. It is the first sorority house to house women on the UTC and UTK campuses. According to student development staff, there are no plans for other UTC sororities to use their meeting houses as residences. The sorority houses are generally not large enough to accommodate residents. Renovations to the historic Fort Wood homes where the students will reside were completed with a loan secured from Sigma Kappa's national headquarters. The brick house, approximately 2,600 square feet, can house up to six sorority sisters. They Five chapter has nearly 80 active members. They list all timer research as the community service project they support. And this past Thursday, we had a delay in classes because of a very short winter storm that came through Chattanooga. Here are a few UTC students' p opinions on their snow day. Um, I just sat around into my house, got a snowball, put in my freezer, and that's about it. Just hung out, enjoyed the snow. Uh, I didn't really go to class. I didn't have to. I missed the little cutoff because uh, I didn't have class after 12 15, so I just hung out and watched people build snowmen. So. Well, on snow day, I, got, I went outside around about 3 30 in the morning and just walked out in the snow and took some pictures. I played NCAA football 2007. Anybody that wants some can come get it. I live in Signal View in Red Bank. So just come on over, I'll beat you down. You can cry a little bit, and then it'll be over. Okay, let's take a look at our local news. According to the Times Free Press, the region's blood supply is very low around this time of the year. Cold temperatures and inclement weather may have kept many blood donors at home, and now blood assurance officials are asking for the help as the region's blood supply has fallen to a critically low level. Donors may head to one of Blood Assurance's 11 locations until 6 p.m. today and from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Saturday. To find the center closest to you, call 1-800-962-0628 or visit bloodassurance.org. And in national news, the Bush administration's projected cost of more than $100 billion per, per year for their war in Iraq assumes that operations will continue pretty much as they are over the next two years, the White House's budget chief of staff has said. In addition, Bush will seek about $145 billion for the 2008 fiscal year, which begins in October, when he presents his budget to Congress, the first time Bush has included war costs in the regular budget. In other national news, the mother of a four-year-old boy whose foot was mauled by the family's pit bull puppy was charged with child endangering, authorities said Saturday. Martina Jennings, 23, took her son to a hospital Friday because his foot was bleeding and he told authorities she, he, that she saw blood on the dog's face and chest. Lucas County Dog uh, Warden Tom Skeldon said the foot was amputated. The boy has no feeling below the waist because of spina bifida, so he did not know the dog was biting him, Skeldon said. Spina bifida is a defect that occurs when the backbone and spinal cord do not close together before birth. The puppy was put to death and Jennings was being held in the Lucas County Jail on the felony charge. Alright, and on a brighter note, yesterday was the grand finale of the football season when the Indianapolis Colts took on the Chicago Bears in Super Bowl 41. Let's take a look at some highlights from yesterday's game. For Headline Sports, I'm Ray D'Alessio. Super Bowl 41 will be remembered for a number of things, most notably the weather. This, the first Super Bowl ever played in the rain. Unfortunately for the Colts, it didn't stop Devin Hester. The Bears rookie special teamer taking the opening kickoff and returning it 92 yards for a touchdown. First time in Super Bowl history that the opening kickoff was returned for a score. But on this night, Peyton Manning would not be denied. Late first quarter, Manning, the 53-yard hookup with Reggie Wayne. Manning named the game's MVP, throwing for 247 yards and this touchdown. 
And if you like turnovers, there were plenty. A combined eight altogether. Rex Grossman wishing he could have this one back. Grossman picked off by Calvin Hayden, who actually grew up in Chicago. Hayden returning at 56 yards for the score, and that proved to be the final dagger. Colts win 29-17, enabling Tony Dungy to become the first African-American head coach to win the Super Bowl. And for Peyton Manning, he proved once and for all that he can indeed win the big game. Truly a team win and a team effort, and um, we worked real hard this season and really just the past number of seasons. Obviously for the rookies, I know this is special, but this is special for a lot of the veteran players that have been here through some of the great wins we've had, through some of the tough losses, and nice to be able to put it together with a championship. We've got a tremendous group of guys. Whether we'd ever won a championship or not, I would be proud of our, our guys because of the way they are and the way they care for each other. The victory is the Colts' first Super Bowl win since the 1970 season when they still called Baltimore home. For Headline Sports, I'm Ray D'Alessio. All right, and in UTC Sports, it was smooth sailing for the Lady Mocs this past Thursday night as they beat Effie State 76-58. Tonight, the women's basketball team will host Davidson at the McKenzie Arena, looking to hold on to its spot at the top of the Southern Conference. This game will tip off at 7 p.m., and you can call the McKenzie Arena box office for tickets at, two, at 266 Mocs. Keep your seats immediately following the game to listen to the post-game show with the voice of the Lady Mox, Larry Ward, and the head coach of the Lady Mox, Wes Moore. And Casey Long scored 14 on his game high, 19 points in the second half to lead Chattanooga to a 62-57 win over Georgia Southern Saturday afternoon at Hanner Fieldhouse. Casey Long's four steals moved him into third on the school's all-time list. Passing Tim Brooks, Long's 154 steal trails only to West Moore, 198, and Willie White, 197. Chattanooga, 10 to 14, 3 to 9, SoCon will face Davidson on the road Tuesday night. The Wildcats own the Southern Conference top mark at 11 to 1 after a 10-point win over UNC Greensboro Saturday afternoon. Okay, let's take a look at the weather for the week. Today will be partly cloudy, a high of 38, low of 21. Tomorrow will be partly cloudy with a chance of showers, high of 48, low of 38. And Wednesday there will be a chance of showers, high of 51, low of 34. All right, UTC, that about does it for this edition of Mox News. You can catch us at 1230 every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday on Comcast Channel 3, or you can catch us on demand at www.moxnews.com. I'm Allison Conley. And I'm Melissa Braswell. Have a great day, everyone.